Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Calvary Fellowship Church in this special evening where we want to just honor God's gift and Ron and Deb Scott to Calvary Fellowship for over 43 years. Thank you for making this such a special evening. It's going to go ahead, absolutely. We're going to have fun tonight, and we're just going to celebrate, hear some great singing, and then go downstairs later on. We're so glad you're here. We're going to kick it off with the famous trio, Ron, Deb, and Marilyn. They're going to come, and we're going to start singing. Just for the record, I don't know why. I'm usually not nervous behind a piano, but I'm really nervous tonight. I, I just told my family, I said, I am going to make mistakes tonight, but do not laugh when I do it. So it, it might happen. so good just being here again. It feels so good feeling what I feel again. There's just nothing I like better than God's children getting together. Feels so good just being here again. Oh, what peace. Oh, what joy. so good just being here again. It feels so good feeling what I feel again. There's just nothing I like better than God's children get together. Feels so good just being here again. Just look around and you will see Happy faces where sad faces used to be. When Jesus saved us by his mercy, placed us in his family, and now this fellowship means all the world to me. It feels so good just being here again. It feels so good. Nothing I like better than God's children getting together. Feels so good just being here again. Feels so good just being here
next group we're going to have, when I got here uh, just about, I guess, seven or eight years ago, I came and Ron was talking to me and he said, hey, um, you're going to sing with us in a quartet. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, there's a couple people we sing with. Brian used to do it, but now you're going to do it. And they hand me a CD. They're like, here's all the songs we do. So I was just like, oh my goodness, you're already throwing me in there. And uh, But it was, it's such a joy to sing with you guys. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to sing with Ron. And as you all know, he's an amazing piano player. And uh, it's kind of funny. Um, as I was thinking about this night, there's all of these memories that I have that I'll, I'll share some funny ones for sure. But there was one specific night that I'll never forget. Ron was on the piano and he was talking. And, he, and I hope you weren't planning on saying this, but he sat there. And he said, you know, as I look throughout my life, I do construction every single day, but I play piano on Sundays. And God has kept me safe from any injuries that could affect my fingers in any way. And he just pointed toward God and said, without him, I wouldn't be able to do this. And, and I tell you what, those funny memories that I'll never forget will stay with me forever. But I'll never forget watching you say that. And um, that just shows your heart and your dedication to God. So thank you so much for that uh, memory. But I'm going to stop talking. Let's let's sing. What are we doing? Which one? Down the river? <laughs> <laughs> Jerusalem coming down. Yes, it was John. John the Revelator. And when he looked around, he saw feet like press, eyes like fire. Heard a great voice say, Come up higher. John the Revelator. He wrote about the city of. Coming down, yes, it was John, John the Revelator. And when he looked around, he saw feet like brass, eyes like fire. Heard a great voice say, Come up higher. John the Revelator wrote about the city of God. John the Revelator saw Jerusalem coming down. Look 
<laughs> it's rough getting old, isn't it, Ron? It is. Yes. Okay. What was your name again? Uh, oh, Rod. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll just say a word of testimony to you. Ron has been here longer than me. I've been here about 32, 33 years. And it's going to be odd to come in here and not see him sitting there. So we're going to miss you. My mom's going to miss you. I told you she was upset about you being gone, but she hasn't been here for 10 years anyway. So, <laughs> But anytime she comes here, she looks forward to seeing you, and okay. I think everybody does, Ron. I appreciate it. I really do. You ready? <coughs> Two, three. <laughs> Driving down around South Louisiana, stopped in a town called Galliana. Saw a sign on a church that said a fish fry tonight. A little old Cajun preacher was preaching, reminding me of an old camp meeting. It brought St. Matthew 419 to life. He said, I catch up, God cleans up my faith to hook with the love of While you walk up here, I got another quick story. Uh, there was one time that um, my dad, I think it was, they were rehearsing for a benefit of some kind. They were going to sing. And I was probably about eight years old at the time. And it was in Steelville, uh, First Assembly of God there. And they were rehearsing. It was Ron, my dad, and Jerry Beers, if you know who that is. And they're up there playing and singing. I'm just listening, you know. And, my dad comes out to me, again, I'm eight years old, and he looks at me and he goes, this piano player's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> and it was that day that I thought my dad had lost his mind. <laughs> because I'm sitting there thinking now, I don't, what? I can remember the spot I was in the neighborhood where I finally asked him, I said, Dad? You said he wasn't very good. And he goes, I was totally kidding, like, <laughs> obviously. And it was uh, from that day on, he said, no, that's Ron Scott, the legend. <laughs> and so. Uh, legend just means you're old. That's all legend means. <laughs> so that's what I've always known Ron as, is the legend. Well, I'm not going to say much, because if I do, I, I'm going to cry, because I've already got a lump in my throat yeah. saying goodbye to Ron and Deb. Yeah. But um, I, obviously, I'm the oldest one in this quartet. But I'm only a year older than Ron, but he always calls me mom. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I'll really miss that. <laughs> okay, hang on just a second. I want to say one thing. Because anybody that knows me that's gone to this church knows that probably in 43 years, 
this might be about the seventh or eighth time that I've actually ever stood up here and sang. I'm always hiding behind the piano, so if I mess up, that's my reason for that. So. <laughs> I got an excuse for everything. Really. <laughs> One that's unplugged. I went with eight. We'll check, see. check, there. there okay. One. <laughs> Two. Three. Mm-hmm. Ready, sing a little closer. <laughs> There's a promised land untouched by man, prepared for the saved and the blessed. A city built for a square far away somewhere as a home for the saints to rest. So many have tried, but they couldn't describe all the beauties on that bright shore. Of course, never entered into the hearts of men what the Father has in store. I could sing about heaven for a million years and never get the story told. Of the jasper walls and the gates of pearl and the streets made of pure gold. Even John the Revelator in the heavenly vision could never really say what he saw. I could sing about heaven for a million years and still I could never tell it all. From the throne there springs a glimmering stream of waters pure and sweet. And it flows by the tree of life on its way to the crystal sea. And the precious stones that the walls rest on are of 12 different kinds. And the night will cease for the Prince of Peace is the light that forever shines. I could sing about heaven for a million years and never get the story told. Of the jasper walls and the gates of pearl and the streets made of pure gold. Even John the Revelator in his heavenly vision could never really say what he saw. I could sing about heaven for a million years and still I could never tell it all. I could sing about heaven for a million years and never get the story told. Of the jasper walls and the gates of pearl and the streets made of pure gold. Even John the Revelator in the heavenly vision could never really say what he saw. I could sing about heaven for a million years and still I could never tell it all. Even John the Revelator in the heavenly vision could never really say what he saw. I could sing about heaven for a million years and still I could never tell it all. Uh, I just wanted to give a little, I guess, a little history. <laughs> I'm, uh, and again, those of you who know me, I'm, I'm not doing this for the attention or anything. I just, they're having this night for me, which I really, really appreciate for Deb and I. And I just wanted to kind of tell you how it started and where it all, where it all came from. Uh, so this first picture basically is how it started. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, go on to the next one, Mike. Okay, this is, uh, I was six years old here. I was in kindergarten, and that's when I started taking piano lessons. Uh, So from about six years old to, I don't know, seven or eight, I took from this one lady. And then uh, we started going to Grandview Baptist Church up in Florissant. And our music director, song leader, he was Johnny Lee, and he had Lee's music over in Florissant. And we started going over there. My sister actually taught there for a little bit, which I'm going to introduce you in a little bit, so just hang on. Um, And uh, so anyway, go go to the next one. Okay. Uh, Yeah, this is my sister, and I I wanted this picture just so, because sometimes people ask me if I'm older than she is or she's older than me. (laughs) And so I figured without having to say anything, this one would kind of, you know, prove that. Uh, (laughs) 
So anyway, um, were you wondering what key to play that song in? Hold my finger in my mouth? No, I, <laughs> I think I was trying to figure out, do I want to play the piano the rest of my life or guitar? I can't, I can't remember for sure. But anyway, uh, so that's, uh, go on to the next one. That's good. So when I was, I guess when I, w I was about nine years old, you were 13, I think. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry. I just told you how much older than you are. Uh, we started, my, and my dad, my dad and mom, either one, you've heard the expression, can carry a tune in a bucket. I mean, either one of them could sing at all. But they really pushed us and really helped us and, and encouraged us. So we started actually singing at different churches, going around different churches and stuff and singing. And when I was, I think I was nine, nine or ten, either one, we made an album. And uh, this was, we had these signs in the back of our 58 station wagon in the windows, Kathy and Ryan, the gospel singers. But uh, anyway, I, we're, I'm just going to, or he's going to play just a little bit of a, one of the songs that we did on our album. Um, and keep in mind that my voice hadn't changed yet, so... Anyway, I do want to introduce my sister right now. Kathy, would you please stand up, please? This is my sister. And again, we grew up, like I say, just musically. Uh, my dad actually had a, got us a radio program at W, what is it, WGNU over in Granite City when we were that age. Uh, we had a half hour Sunday morning radio program. But that was just so many instruments be between the two of us. I think we played, I don't know, eight or nine instruments or something. But uh, so anyway, from that point on, go ahead, Micah. Uh, just a couple more pictures of that. Um, but during this time, we, like I say, we were out singing at different places. And we sang somewhere at a singing where there was other groups there. And I think Barney Barrel uh, and Richard Quartet was there. And uh, anyway, later on, they lost their piano player and Barney called my mom and not even my mom and dad and I didn't even know about this at the time but they called in to see if they would be willing to let me you know travel with the quartet if it would work out and everything so uh, Finus, <laughs> Finus always told the story he asked Barney he said well who's our new piano player and Barney and I was 13 at the time by the way uh, and Barney wouldn't say he said well just come on over you know we always practice in Barney's basement and uh, that's where his piano was he said, come on over and we'll see. And I remember Finus saying he walked down the steps that night and saw this little kid sit at the piano, and he almost turned around and walked out because he thought Barney had lost his mind. But anyway, it worked out. And uh, go on to a couple of those other ones, Micah. So this is when I joined the group at 13. Um, it's weird because me and Finus are the same height there. So I was pretty, <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty short at the time, I guess. But uh, anyway, and then this is about the same time. Uh, go ahead. Okay, I'm about 15 here. Uh, I love the suits that we wore back then. It was, it was just beautiful. Okay, 17 here. Uh, and we got to got to be on a 
TV show down in Cape Girardeau with the Missourians. Uh, got to do some filming with that and stuff. So it was enjoyable. I mean, I, I did a lot of things that I wouldn't have got to do otherwise. And uh, I do want to say, too, just like when Ryan was preaching last Sunday, he talked about how he, he was saved when he was six years old and he was in church his whole life and everything. Uh, same with me. I mean, I got saved at six years old. And I just, I just really feel like being able to be a part of that group my teenage years, I don't know that I would have gotten in trouble otherwise, but I know that traveling with a, a gospel quartet and, and singing and, and doing all that every weekend uh, kept me from any temptations of, of doing things that some teenagers get into. So, you know, I, I praise God for that. I, I really appreciate that part of it too, you know. Uh, and at that point in time, my, my f I had thought, boy, I would like to do this for a living for the rest of my life, you know, uh, you know, play for groups and stuff. And, uh, and then all of a sudden this happened. Uh, now everybody's thinking it, Ron. Why is your hair longer? <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's that was just a style back then, I guess. I don't know, but uh, it's almost longer than Deb's, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, anyway, Deb and I started dating when we was, I think we were just turning 17, and uh, you know we kind of got to liking each other a lot. Uh, in fact, the newspaper that. Uh, Missourians put out that it was a gospel banner, I think, had this little thing in there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That, that, uh, anyway, this next picture is the last weekend that I ever played with the Victor Quartet. Um, I liked the suits we had and the white boots. That was really cool back then, you know. But, uh, oh my gosh, look at the hair. <laughs> That's terrible. Anyway, uh, Deb and I, you know, we fell in love. I mean, we did. And uh, this was the last weekend that I ever played with the Victor Quartet, and she, she was able to be there that weekend. And uh, from that, I think, you know, because I, I remember Deb telling me that her dad told her, you know, honey, he's going to want to be on the road all the time playing. Uh, you know, he's, you don't want you don't want to marry somebody like that, do you? You know? And, uh, but I, I made up my mind when we did fall in love that I wasn't going to be that person that was on the road. I'm going to be home with my family. So that, that's when I quit playing for the quartet, and then we got married a little bit later. Uh, yeah, I still had a lot of hair, didn't I? <laughs> so, and then that turned into this. <laughs> a few years later. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I got to, you know, I, I did get to play for some different groups along the way, but it, it wasn't like we were traveling all the time or anything like that. Uh, that was a group. In fact, Jerry Pilgrim used to go to this church years ago. He was a Free Will Baptist preacher. Uh, and some of the other ones, I know Kenny knows them because they were from Farmington area. That's one night when we did a, what, what was that called? What was it? Cadillac Cowboys, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that was a fun night we had, yeah. That's just something I've always really felt I is true. I mean, uh, when you're in music, you meet some amazing people, and there's a lot of people I wouldn't have met if it hadn't been for that, so I really thank God for that. And then through the years, I've gotten to play for the kids here at church when they competed, you know, at, at our state and national level. And I think that particular year is the year that our girls' quartet won national that year. So uh, that was always an honor to get to do that, too. So. Anyway, um, it's been fun. It has. Uh, I just thank God that I've been able to do this all these years. And like, like Micah said earlier, I, I was around machinery for years, you know, working, and, and I've done construction for years, and I've never had a broken finger or, or actually I did shoot a nail through my hand one time, but it, but it missed everything, but it just hit the fat. So, I mean, it was, there wasn't anything. It didn't do anything. But uh, other than that, I really, I, I just thank God for protecting me all those years with, you know, with uh, that kind of things going on and everything. Anyway, I'm going to, we're going to do a couple songs here, three or four, five or six or something. Um, and I don't even know how this happened, but how many of you know who Floyd Kramer is? Wow, great, great. I don't know how in the world at 11 or 12 years old that he was such an influence on me, but I kind of copied his style and, and played his style 
through the years, and, and still, even when I'm playing a gospel song, his style was that little, it was that little roll thing, you know, and that, that's what he does. A lot of country music, you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear that in it. Anyway, uh, the first couple songs we were going to play, and I hope Kenny doesn't fire me for this, but they're not gospel songs. They're songs that his, they were Floyd Kramer's most popular songs. One of them is called On the Rebound. We're going to do that one first. Okay. <laughs> And probably his most famous song would be this next one, Last Date.
tell you one thing, too. It's been a privilege through the years to be able to play with all these guys. Give these guys a hand. I mean, some of the best musicians I've ever played with. I mean, I really enjoy it. Really enjoy it. Ready to do? What was it? Oh, okay. Ready? <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that like classical music, and it's just, I don't know, it's something I never did really get into, playing-wise, but probably, sorry, probably because, uh, and my wife always corrects me on this, I can't, I can't sight-read music, because I, I was always blessed with the ability to be able to play by ear. Uh, I, I know what notes they are and everything, but I guess with classical music, you almost have to play it by the note, you know, and uh, I don't know, and then, also, it seems like classical pianists are always, you know, making weird faces and stuff. And I've always, <laughs> I've always been the kind who just sit behind a piano and just play, you know. But uh, you know, I never do want to do this, you know. I just, I didn't want to do that stuff, you know. So I never did really play classical music. But this, this particular song is kind. I think it kind of used to be classical, but then I think Andy Williams did this song. It's Where Do I Begin? But I don't know if it came from classical or not, but it's probably as close as classical as I can play, so I'm going to play something like that. <laughs>
I'm going to play one more song. We're going we're gonna to do uh, Exodus. I had somebody ask me this morning, are you going to play Exodus tonight? And it's just, I've always loved the song. I mean, it, I, I think it came from a movie or something, but it's, it, it's, uh, it did? Okay, thank you. Um, anyway, uh, again, I, I appreciate these guys uh, playing with them and everything, and they really, they really help on this song. So let's, let's go ahead and start it. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to do one more song. Again, I just want to tell everybody here at Calvary how much it's meant to me to be able to do this all these years. Uh, it's a sad day. It, it really is. The one this morning was my last Sunday, but we're starting a new adventure, and I'm looking forward to that too. Um, so anyway, this song pretty much says, I want to say. <laughs> Lately I've been looking back along this winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche. There's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond 
my wildest dreams when I go to sleep at night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Because through it all, God's been Times replay and I can see that I've cried some bitter tears, but I felt his arms around me as I faced my greatest fears. You see, I've had more gains than losses, and I've known more joy than hurt as his grace rolled down upon me undeserved. God's been good. In my life, I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep at night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't trade them if I could. Because through it all, God's been good. For God has been my Father, my Savior, and friend. His love was my beginning, and his love will be my end. I could spend forever trying to tell you everything he is, but the best way I can say it is this. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep at night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Because through it all, God's been did it and you did it well you did it well quite a journey from six years old back when you had some really good hair the wave I was extremely jealous and then you had to show the nine-year-old picture and then teenage picture to do that one more time would be wonderful wouldn't it <laughs> it's not gonna happen Ron we're thankful First of all, that you felt the conviction of God for your sins and you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. How old were you, Ron, when you were saved? Six. Around six? Yeah, six yeah. And you recognized God's natural gift to you and you used that for his glory and honor in playing the piano. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't play classical and make those crazy faces that you tried to do tonight. That's good. You did gospel. You did it well. And many people have been blessed because of your ministry. God has used you and Deb in a lot of different ways. Folks, you do realize that he wasn't just the church pianist for 43 years. You also served on the trustee board. You did a lot of construction, work days and many other things here for the Lord. And as a church, we say thank you. Folks, the day where you woke up and you took your family to church every Sunday and you, you sat and you listened and you serve, that day is being contested today. <laughs> there was no question in your home when Sunday rolled around, your kids knew you're going to be in church. And, and that's so important. That's so important. And your life tells the journey of God's grace. The good times, the bad times, the difficult times, we've all been there. Our life is a journey 
a journey of faith. And what matters is what you do with Jesus Christ and how you say yes to his service. So thank you, my brother, for serving for 43 years. Deb, thank you for being right there with him. And together, you guys have touched numerous people. I'm going to ask you to join me here on the stage. Come on. That means when you, you, you get up and you move, you come on. I know you didn't know this, and yes, the church sent out an email, and we didn't include you guys, and there was some uh, conversation I think you had with my wife today, because we want to show our appreciation to you, Ron, and how do you, how do you appreciate someone for 43 years of faithful service? Well, there's a lot of things we could do, but I know you love golf. And... <laughs> And there happens to be a golf course in Branson. And in the community where you're going to be living is the Stonebridge community, and there's a Ledgestone Country Club there. And I've had a couple of conversations with Phil, the golf pro there. And we have collected money to provide you for 36 rounds of golf from Calvary Fellowship Church. <laughs> Whenever you want to play golf, however you want to use that, it's yours, buddy. So it's there for you. If it takes you a year or five years, there's an account for you, and you just go in, say, I'm Ron Scott, and I'm going to play around in golf today. But you need to save one of those for me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. And, and Deb, Deb, many times when Ron was here, you were at home with the kids. And whether he was playing some gig or whatever he was doing, you let him go and you supported him. And we know that that's, that, that takes a lot for you to do. And so we want to show our appreciation to you. So we collected some money for you to have a day spa, at least five different treatments, I think, is what they got for you at uh, a special spa in Branson. So thank you for all that you have done. Church, let's, let's thank the Lord for what he's done through Ron and Deb. I really don't think you want that, Ron. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we're going to make our way to the Family Life Center. Ron, we've got your favorite cake from Costco. There's two of them down there, so there's plenty of cake. There's ice cream. We want everyone to join us downstairs. Mike is going to have an open mic for us to just hear some stories and have a good time for as long as we want to. So that was his idea, but I said yes to it, and so it's like, it's all good. We're going to have a good time, but before we do, we love you guys, and I just want to pray a blessing over you. And, uh, and then after the prayer, I've asked Craig and Marilyn Jones to lead you downstairs. Please help yourself to the cake, and we'll follow right after the prayer, okay? Our Father, thank you so much for Ron and Deb. Thank you for saving them. Thank you for blessing them throughout the years and their family. Father, you have been so good to them, and they know that. You've been faithful. You have blessed them. And you have blessed so many people through them. Thank you for the gift that you gave both of them to serve you in the heart for your church. It's been a joy, Lord, and we thank you for their service to this church. And now we send them on to continue what you have for them to do in Branson. We ask that you would give them discernment and guidance as they seek another place of worship, Settle their hearts, and may they find great joy in Jesus as they retire in Branson and continue to serve you and your church. We love them dearly, and we know you do too. Bless their family. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them here and for their service to Calvary Fellowship Church. And Father, as we go downstairs, we pray you'd bless the time of fellowship and the desserts, and may we just enjoy being together this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.